Hey guys, DMS here today. I'm going to talk to you guys about reading frequency response graphs. You probably see these all the time on the internet, especially in my reviews. When I talk about how a certain headphone sounds, this is how you can essentially visualize and see how a headphone is going to sound before actually purchasing one, at least to an extent. Um, now from these, you can't necessarily make immediate decisions based on like sound stage or imaging or whatnot. And from those, you kind of have to hear from others, but this can give you a general idea of how bass, mid range and treble is going to sound on a headphone before making that financial commitment to it. And to talk about that, I have an example pulled up here in Logic Pro X. Now, before we get too far into it, um, I have some notes written down here just to kind of help you understand the basics. Uh, now, frequencies that we hear range from 10 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It's a pretty big range of hearing, not nearly as large as some other animals, but that's what we hear. Now, most of the music we listen to is going to be within the range of probably 100 hertz to maybe six to 8,000 hertz. And everything outside of that, I think is still important, but it is definitely a little bit less necessary than the things inside that range. Now, you have essentially your lows, mids, and highs. Your lows are going to be everything from 10 hertz to 300 hertz. That's your bass and your low end. And if you were to play music like this song, for example, you can see as I play it that the music is visualized in this graphic equalizer here. So if I were to take a, another equalizer, so I'll make this a little bit smaller, and move this down in my chain, this is just coming out the master channel, let's put another EQ on right here, a single band EQ. So if we were just to have lows, as described here, 10 hertz to 300 hertz, this is what this song would sound like and look like in this graphic equalizer. As you can see, it starts to drastically roll off right here around 300 hertz, and we're not getting anything above that. But what you hear right now is the music just at 300 hertz and under. Now, moving on from there is the mid-range. Mid-range is 300 hertz to 2,400 hertz. For this, I'm going to take in another EQ, and we're going to use one to cut out the highs and one to cut out the lows, so you guys can hear just what it would sound like with only the mid-range. Okay, so this one right here is cutting out everything under 300 hertz, and this right here is cutting out everything over 2,400 hertz, and this is allowing us to visualize it. So this is the same song, but with only mid-range. And you can very clearly see where it's showing up on this uh, visualizer. And this visualizer is very similarly laid out to how frequency response graphs are for headphones. Now next, you have our highs, which are basically 2,400 hertz and up, but for all intents and purposes, most people can't really hear above 20,000 hertz. So we're just going to say and keep it safe at 2,400 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is what most scales are, and it is also what the CQ reaches up to. So I'm gonna turn off my high cut, and we're just going to cut off everything under 2,400 hertz, and this is what this song would sound like if you could only hear the highs. Now, something you might be noticing right now is that the highs, while definitely present, are not nearly as loud as the mid-range and lows were. They're not peaking up quite as high on this chart. but you can also see where they fall into place on this graph. Now let's take this for example and say that we are looking at a pair of headphones like the Bayer Dynamic DT880. And I'm going to pull up a graph on my computer which I will edit into this video and post so you guys can see. Okay, now bone stock in this graph, you can tell that there are two main peaks here. There are peaks at 5,700 Hertz and a second peak at what looks to be 8,000 hertz. Now if I take this EQ at 5,700 hertz and at 7,900 hertz and boost both of these two frequencies, and maybe a little bit more of a narrow band than that, we can get a general idea of the kind of peaks that this headphone has. 
So I'm going to play this back, and it's probably going to sound a little bit unpleasant at first, um, but this gives us a rough idea of the kind of peaks that this headphone is generating based off that graph. So listen to this real quick. And here it is, off. And then on. Likewise, if we were to look at a headphone that, let's say, had a serious dip at 1000 hertz, right here in the mid-range, let's pull that frequency down a little bit, maybe widen it out just a hair. This is what it would sound like on. And then without. And then with the dip again. And you can see a slight difference there. Now, as such, we could also talk about, say, if a headphone has a serious roll-off on the highs, say, like this. As many headphones, um, especially planars, I've noticed in some cases, tend to have roll-off on the highs like this. This is going to make for a darker, warmer-sounding headphone. So this is what this would essentially sound like. As you can see, the low end is pushing out a lot more, and the highs are more recessed. Let's take this off and see what it sounds like. As you can see, the highs are a lot more pronounced now, but it's a bit more of a forward aggressive sound. Whereas on, this is a more warm and relaxed tone. This is a slight exaggeration, but this is a bit more of the response curve that things like the um, Odyssey LCD-2s go for. And generally, the farther you go to the left, the lower your frequency is, and the farther you go to the right, the higher your frequency is. And based off what you've heard here, hopefully you can use that to determine at least to an extent, what certain peaks are going to sound like and what certain dips are going to sound like as you are trying to find headphones that are right for your needs. Because I definitely think that frequency response graphs, while they don't tell the full picture, I think they're still extremely helpful when looking at what a headphone may or may not sound like before you buy. So hopefully this video was helpful. If there's something I missed, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know. That way I can follow up on it in the future. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you want to help support the channel and get early access to videos like this, you can check out the Patreon linked in the video description. Until the next one, guys. Peace.